104.5, the team, you're home for New York sports, and our good friend Andy Serling from Naira calling us right now. And uh, Andy, the draw is set. Did you see anything in that that you think will influence any horses' runs in this race? No, actually, it, it, it felt like it. It was one of those draws where nobody was dramatically affected. I mean, the post positions aren't super important, considering there's a full quarter mile or more run from the start to the first turn. I think you don't want to get horses you know, down the rail. Maybe that could be a problem, but the horse who drew the rail is the least likely winner of the race. So in this case, it was largely irrelevant. One horse that's not in this year's field and is getting a lot of popular pick was Gronkowski, named after New England Patriot tight end Rob Gronkowski. If Gronkowski was in this year's field, would it have had a chance to win? No. Okay. <laughs> it's, it's sort of a double-edged sword. For people who are betting the race somewhat intelligently, and should you happen to win, you would have more money if Gronkowski was in there. For people who are just going to bet because they're fans of – there are people – wait a second – there are people that are fans of the New England Patriots. I wasn't aware of that. I live in New York City. So I've never heard of anyone, but apparently there are fans of the New England Patriots, and if they bet him, they would have lost. So, you know, it worked both ways. But no, he, he, the likelihood that he would have been competitive with these horses is extremely remote. Naira is Andy Serling with us right now. Andy, every year there's a, you know, there's a patch, or this year it was supposed to be Gronk. What's the, what's the storyline that you find most compelling this year? You know, without Gronk, there really is no horse for, for, for dopes to lose their money on. So that's a good thing. Um, I, think, I think the storyline this year um, is probably horses that didn't race it to whether or not they can win the Derby. I mean, that's been a big thing. They call it the curse of Apollo. Because it's not a curse, but I think it's been some incredibly long period of time. So uh, won the Derby and hadn't raced as a two-year-old. And we've seen a number of horses like Curlin that finished third. And, you know, often they're just not quite ready. They don't have the foundation. And when you have the favorite in Justify, who's made just three starts, and his first start was February 18th, and maybe the third choice, um, a horse named Magna Moon, who I think has absolutely no chance whatsoever, he made his first start on January 13th. They're two of the favorites, and Justify is clearly the favorite, and neither one ran as a two-year-old. So that's really the biggest story, is whether or not this is the year that somebody can win the Derby that didn't race it too. I'm going to get back to Magna Moon here in a second, but let's stick with Justify. How does he stack up with other favorites in past years at the Kentucky Derby? Because we've had a stretch here where the favorite continues to win the run for the Roses. Yeah, it's, a, it's an interesting point. I mean, the, der- the der- favorite has won, I believe, five years in a row. Uh, and some people say it, it coincides with the point system, and that has changed the race a bit because you don't get as many of these sort of no-hope speed horses. And, you know, speed horses blazing in the front end help create a more of a chaotic result. But I don't think that's really the reason. I think it's just randomness. I mean, how the heck did, did Always Dreaming end up the favorite last year? A horse who's done absolutely nothing since and was sort of dubious going in, and he got on a wet track and got a perfect trip and won. I, I don't think it enhances Justifies, and every event is a separate event. But I do think that, you know, in life, when, when things sort of keep happening in an obvious manner, you know what's going to happen, right? Like if you're watching the NFL in, in the first three weeks, all the favorites are winning easily. You know a week is coming where all the dogs are going to cover. It's just sort of the nature of things. And I do think this could be a derby where that happens. Justify is very talented and probably the most talented horse in the race. But he's a horse who's a little bit, I wouldn't say he's slow out of the gate, but it takes him a few strides to get going. And if, as has happened before, a holy bull who was eliminated the break in the Derby in 1994, who was a favorite. If he doesn't break that sharply and the door gets shut on him and he suddenly finds himself eight lengths behind in 10th or 12th, is he going to have the seasoning to fight for the field? And that's a concern with Justify, who really hasn't gotten any great experience out of his races. He hasn't faced any real adversity. You're giving Magna Moon no chance to win this race. Why is that? I don't think he's good enough, to be honest with you. I look at his races, and I think he sort of peaked um, two starts ago. In the Arkansas Derby last time, he was able to set an extraordinarily slow pace. If you look at his fractional times going a distance compared to the other two-turn distance races that day at Oakland, he was crawling, absolutely crawling, and just had the easiest go. He drifts out in the stretch, and I just don't think he's fast enough. I mean, under ideal circumstances, he's running races that simply aren't as fast as a number of the others, and he's going to be a short price in a big field. To me, he wins, I lose. Naira's Andy Serling with us right now, 104.5 The Team. Uh, Andy, last time we talked, I, I was I was admittedly stupid. I was going with a horse because it had my nephew's name in it. You said don't do it. I've blacked out the results. I know I didn't make money. How do we make money this time? You big, me small. You smart, me stupid. <laughs> well, Help me. I'm 
how about your nephew? Did he really was he really touched by the fact that you you bet a horse with his name in it? He he does not recall it in any way, shape, or form. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. I mean, he got nothing out of it. <laughs> right, you right. Lost your money. You were loyal, and he doesn't care. Right, right. Like I said, you <laughs> big, you know, me small. You cemented your relationship with him at least for another year or two before he turns on you. You know <laughs> that might have been a good idea, but you got nothing out of it. If we're not playing video games online, he doesn't know I exist. <laughs> there you go. Well, there you have it. Um, you know, I mean, you know, you do have to deal with a horse like Mendelssohn, the, the horse who, who won big over in, in Dubai. I'm going to try to beat him. For me, I think Bolt Doro is the horse that has run the best races of anybody that won't be that short a price. You look at his two races this year, he got put up on a DQ against a good horse named McKenzie for Bob Baffert that's getting hurt. Um, Justify beat him last time, but Justify really had the run of the race. This time, Bolt Doro is going to get a little more pace up front, and I think Bolt Doro is probably the horse that's just going to be a fair enough price in the 10 to 1 range that I kind of like. I think Good Magic is going to run well. Last year's juvenile winner. I question overall whether he really wants a mile and a quarter, but he ran his best race last year in his third start, and that was the Breeders' Cup Juvenile. This year's Derby is his third start. He's been training sensationally. His trainer, Chad Brown, is extremely high in his chances. So both door and Good Magic are my main two. I'll use Justified offensively. The long shot I'm going to use is Enticed for trainer Kieran McLaughlin, who I thought ran very well in the Wood Memorial when he finished second. And it's a better race than it looks. He might be a little slow, but he's thirty to one morning line, and he's the one I'm going to use as a price. So I'm uh, some I'm I'm eleven six twelve seven. I love that. All right, well, I got to tell you, it's all over the capital region. Everybody's thrilled you're taking a Chad Brown horse in this thing. It's awesome to have you know Mechanicville's own be one of the favorites to to win the Derby. Yeah, no, it, it, it's cool, and, and Chad and I are good friends, and I'm, you know, I'm rooting for him, and I don't even have to bet much money on Good Magic. I'll be very happy to see him win, and he, listen, he's a good story upstate. He's a good, great story in racing. I mean, at this point, winning two straight Eclipse Awards, he's the top trainer in the country. And we have, uh, we have, we have our guy in the building who's, he says he's a horse racing expert. I think that's just because he invests the most of anybody in the building. <laughs> um, he, he, he has been all over Chad Brown, in love with him, but he always, he always talked to me about value bets and I don't feel like every time he gives me a value bet, I win anything. Is it, do you subscribe to that? Like, if if it's a three to one, do you bet it anyway, or do you try to find that eight nine to one no matter what? Well, I mean, a horse can pay three forty and be value. If a horse rates to win the race ninety percent of the time, and you're getting you know three dollars back, it's value, right? right? A horse could pay thirty dollars and be bad value. Maybe he was fifty to one to win the race, right? And he was two percent, and he paid like he was six percent. So value isn't really what the payoff is. Value is the horse's odds relative to his chance to win. It's a tough thing to find in racing because of the takeout. Chad Brown horses are rarely value because he gets bet very heavily. He does deliver uh, at a high level, so they're not as bad value sometimes as they look. We're all in search of value. We think we find value, but it's very hard to find. So basically, he's been explaining it wrong to me all this time, and you just made me understand it. So now I can't wait to, until he brings it up again. <laughs> I, I can't wait either. Can, can you call me? Can you like we, get me in the conversation? Yeah, we'll, 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 we'll pull a little speakerphone. I won't even tell him you're there. <laughs> it's the most misused term in racing. People are constantly saying value because they like an eight to one shot, and it's, it's it's badly misused. And I think people don't understand it. Love it. Andy Surly, man, we appreciate you uh, helping us out. Hopefully we all cash in on Saturday. Uh, this race, obviously one of the biggest ones, the local arena football team, to make sure people come out for their block party, they're going to have the derby up on the giant screens out in front of the cool. arena. Cool. Now, are they going to have the Belmont Stakes up on the giant screen too, you think? I, if, if they, the, still not, they won't be in it for the Belmont. If the game is going on, I have to check the dates. If they're, they are. If, oh, they, so oh, they, I don't they, know if they're going to have it up, but the Belmont's the same Saturday I'm as sure then, they so, will. Yeah. They have to. It's a New York race. They'd be crazy not to. You guys coming down for the Belmont? Yeah, uh, I will be there. Bachelor left. party, Andy Serling. I'll be there for the bachelor party, my friend. Oh, that's right. That's right. You guys are gonna come visit me, right? Well, well you said you're uh, too big for me. Well, no, I, I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna lower myself for a little, <laughs> little bit. You know, just, just for you. Thank you. I don't yeah, do it nice. for a lot of people, but yeah. I'm gonna do it for you. I'm gonna flip down off my ivory tower <laughs> and lower myself <laughs> near you <laughs> if you're coming. You know, yes. there are seats left. Maybe you could be the guy. You know about the Belmont 150 sweepstakes, right? Yes. One lucky fans in and picks the Belmont winner. Every ticket, right. $1, yeah, 150 And then if you bet on Naira Bets, you get five entries automatically. There you go. Right. So these are all ways to join, and maybe it could be you. It'd be a great bachelor party, right? You'd probably leave the bachelor party if you won 150000 right? Oh, yeah. I might leave, <laughs> I might leave a lot of things if I won $150,000. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Andy, we love you, brother. Thank you so much. Look forward to talking to you more as the, as the uh, season goes on. 
can't wait. Highlight of my, my day, my week, my life. <laughs> I can smell the sarcasm here. <laughs> <laughs>